So today I'm going to be showing you how to make an audio visualizer just like on my BT Clipper. So for example, so yeah, there's this little audio visualizer waveform visualizer that shows you what the audio looks like as you're clipping it and passing through. And it's actually not difficult because Juice has an audio visualizer component. First, we're going to need to make an instance of the audio visualizer and we can see that it doesn't have a default constructor. We have to give it an initial num channels and I like just giving it one channel, but we can remember that since this is a component we can see in the documentation that it inherits from component so it also has add and make visible and set bounds and set color and stuff like that uh, that tells us that aside from doing all of this audio based stuff to actually make it come up in the editor we have to call add and make visible and set bounds so let's make an instance juice audio visualizer component and I'll call it wave viewer and we need to give it like I said there's no default constructor we have to give it an initial num channels so let's go into the constructor wave viewer let's give it one channel we need to tell it the repaint rate which is the frequency at which it repaints itself and it doesn't need to be super high because we don't want it drawing more than what our eyes can even tell is making a difference because that's just extra cpu for no reason but i did find that if you go below 30 that it looks a little choppy so let's do wave viewer dot set repaint rate and let's do 30 i find that works well and then we also need to tell it the buffer size buffer size and this i'm gonna set it to 256 this is how many samples the component is gonna draw so if you don't give it a lot of samples like if you say 32 it's gonna look like it's drawing really fast because it's only gonna draw like one transient per like frame of the whole thing i guess if that makes sense so if you give it more samples it looks like it zooms out and gives you more time to look at everything so that's the buffer size we need to go ahead and go into the process block and actually push the buffer to the component so we need to say wave viewer dot push buffer and we're going to choose the one that says audio buffer as a parameter and we're just going to give it the buffer is that all we need to do in the plugin processor set repaint rate which is how often it repaints itself buffer size which is how many samples it draws and it kind of looks like it's a zoom in and out on the waveform viewer that's how it kind of like comes across and we don't really need to do anything and prepare to play i'm sure we could do something if we wanted but i can't think of anything at the moment uh, and then we're actually pushing the buffer to the component. And then we have to go into the editor and actually add the component. So our typical add and make visible and set bounds. And since it's in the plugin processor and it's public, we can call audio processor, which is a reference to the plugin processor. And then we can access things in it like the wave viewer. So we do add and make visible and we're gonna do set bounds like a normal component. Uh, so audio processor dot wave viewer dot set bounds. I should have chose the other set bounds option because I'm gonna actually just do the get local bounds and I'm gonna do the the resize with keeping center. I always forget what it's called. What is it? With size keeping center, right. And I'm gonna give it a new width and height that is half of the plugin. So hopefully that'll look like uh, just kind of a square that's half of the plugin in the middle. So I'll just say get width and get height times 0.5 and then get height times 0.5. Five. And the last thing I think we need to do is give it some colors. So we're going to say audio processor dot wave viewer dot set colors. So you give it a background color and a waveform color. So let's give it a background color of black so that it stands out from the other parts of the plugin. And we'll give it a waveform color of that, that, um, that off white that I like the white smoke. Yeah. White smoke. And then I'll give it an alpha of 0 0.05 so it's not you know super bright and punishing let's see is that it i think that's it oh we need to give it f whenever you call with alpha you need to specify float let's build and see if that works okay i'm gonna reinstantiate it to get a fresh copy okay so we have the little black background like i thought and there we go We've got our waveform viewer. So let's do something that i haven't actually done before i'm gonna put a slider right here that will let us change the buffer size and it'll allow you to kind of zoom in and out on the waveform viewer. I'm going to use, yeah, I guess I'll just use a, a fader. So I'll use one of the Vitor ones since I pulled in my module, Vitor GUI fader. And I'll say wave zoom and fader doesn't have a default constructor. So what is it called again? Wave zoom. And here's all the things we need to pass it. The suffix value, which is going to be samples. I'm just going to put S and let's go from 32 to 1024. And the interval value is going to be, I think we want to move by one. And then return value will be 256. And I don't feel like making audio parameters and stuff. So I'm just going to do it with a 
uh, with like an on change method. So let's just draw the fader first before we do any kind of interaction with the waveform viewer. Wave zoom and wave zoom dot set bounds. Exposition, I'm just gonna put it, I guess, on the right of the waveform viewer. So let's do error processor dot wave viewer uh, get x plus get width and add, I don't know, 24 pixels to it for some padding. And we'll do this dot get y. I'll give it a width of like 128. I'm gonna give it a height of the wave viewer. We can check that in standalone. Oh, it's a little too far. What if I take this padding off? What does that look like? Okay, that's good enough for our use. Okay, and then the last thing is we want the slider to actually do something to the wave viewer. So we're gonna wanna change this set buffer size right here. So I haven't even tried this before. So it'll be a nice experiment. So let's do wave zoom dot on change, I think it's called on value change, which is when the slider changes. And then let's do a Lambda to just, so now anything we define in this Lambda is gonna happen whenever on value change is called. So what do we want to happen? We want to take the waveform viewer and we want to change the buffer size. So we'll set buffer size and then we'll give it whatever value is in the fader. So wave zoom dot get value and that should probably be good enough. Yeah, check that out. So with a large sample size, it seems like it's kind of zoomed out and is going slower. And as we lower the sample size, it's only drawing a few samples at a time, you know, as, comp as compared to like 1,024, 100 is drawing only 100 samples at a time, so it looks like it's going by faster because we're only seeing like each transient like once in the window, as opposed to when it's set to 1024, that's a lot of samples that it gets to draw. So it fits all of them in the viewer. So that's cool. I'm glad that works. It wasn't very difficult. Now the user can change how large or how many samples are drawn at once, which is pretty useful. Is there anything else in the documentation that looks useful? We could clear the contents of the buffers. Oh, let's do that in prepare to play. And I guess also in release resources. So let's do wave viewer dot clear. So every time we're about to play audio and prepare to play gets called, we'll clear the contents of the wave viewer. And let's also do that in release resources. That'll probably help us with CPU a tiny bit. Might not make a huge difference, but it's probably good practice. It looks like if you wanted to, you could paint a certain channel. And right now we're just, we're just saying one. What if I change this to two? Okay, yeah, so it gives us the channels. So for most sources, you don't really need the two channels. I mean, they're gonna look pretty much identical. I guess it's, it's good to have as an option. You could set up a simple button to, like if they want two channels as opposed to one. That's another thing we could do pretty simply. Let's make a button. All right, so we're gonna do, what kind of button should we do? Let's do the push button. Push button. I don't even know what to call this. Um, channel toggle. So add and make visible, channel toggle. Let's wait on the button text and let's set this up somewhere. So we'll say channel toggle dot set bounds. And I'm gonna do something very similar, except put it on the left side. The way viewer dot get X minus the width. Viewer dot get Y. We can probably just give it a static width. Let's see what that looks like on the standalone build. It might be off of the window. So instead of that, the X position, the Y position minus like 64 or something. Okay, yeah, I just want to make sure it was there. Okay, so let's put it somewhere like X minus, I don't know, 96. Right, and then the Y, let's give it, oh, the same Y position, yeah. Okay, good enough. Let's just leave it there. So we want this to toggle the set channels to either one or zero. So let's give it some text. So channel toggle dot set button text sure num channels and we'll do another lambda like we did for the fader so on click so we'll say channel toggle like get toggle state uh and i'll use the ternary so if toggle state audio processor dot wave viewer dot set num channels so if we toggle it on i don't know it doesn't matter let's just figure out so if it's on, we'll say it's two channels, else it's one channel. Not completely intuitive, but it'll change it back and forth. So that means the default to two. No, if the button is on, let's make it one. And if it's off, 
make it two because off is the fault for the button and two is the fault for what we put in the plugin processor. So let's see if that actually changes the channel in the wave viewer. Okay. Oh, look at that. Very cool. Okay, that's it for this video. Thanks for watching. Check out my streams over at Twitch at twitch.tv slash doctor underscore bruising, where I live stream juice and audio development tutorials on Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays at 5.30 Central Standard Time. I'd love for you to drop into the chat, ask me questions live, and interact with me on stream. And don't forget the stream is also on my YouTube at Dr. Bruzen. You can also download the Viator DSP library that I'm currently working on to make Juice development even easier and faster with awesome looking user interface objects and DSP classes. There's also a documentation page for it, which is pretty cool, and you can find both of them on my GitHub. All of my current plugin releases are on my Patreon at Viator DSP and can be downloaded for free, but consider becoming a patron to continue to support me making free audio plugins. I'd also like to share two awesome Discord communities, Viator DSP and the audio visual community. Both are dedicated to all things audio, so music production, recording, mixing, mastering, uh, coding, juice, pretty much anything. We would love to build an active community of like-minded folks who can learn from, collaborate with, and just hang out with and do whatever. The link to all these resources are down in the video description, and I can't wait to see you there. All right, see you next time.